If you drink alcohol on a regular basis, what role does vodka or other spirits play? Let's talk about it. Hey there, njroot22.com here with another unscripted, uh, off the hook kind of uh, discussion about uh, alcohol. We, we've been talking about alcohol here for a while on njroot22.com. Um, it was a weekly wine review thing and then we just we decided that we're not going to regular drinkers uh, cannot uh, sustain a, a long time on on wine uh, we chose red wine and uh, we just stopped so we switched over to the uh, spiked seltzers and we're still on them they're they're really really uh, good and they enable us especially when we water our drinks down this is actually a vodka drink and we'll talk about that uh, in a few seconds here <sighs> totally different experience uh, anyway we're, we're drinking these seltzers and we have a uh, one or two uh, uh, core spiked seltzers that we like to drink because we can control and throttle our alcohol consumption while at the same time enjoying these quote unquote benefits of uh, consuming alcohol uh, responsibly. We're not getting stupid drunk and we're not driving and we're not doing anything uh, that harms anybody. But I was doing the math here and like, let's just say you drank every day of the week and our two bottles of wine uh, expenditures we tried to find a sweet spot for uh, cost and it was yeah, usually around yeah, between 13 and uh, 15 dollars a night per person if you drank two bottles of wine that was our little uh, line in the sand um, and then when I switched over to the seltzers the something happened uh, my tolerance for alcohol went down as well as you know I'm my weight has gone down too so you know it, even though I could polish away a 12 pack of uh, seltzers just drinking them straight we were able to enjoy a night of consumption well six cans of of seltzer and that probably averages around out to about like seven eight nine ten dollars a day so the cost went down uh, fairly significantly, 20-30% uh, over drinking cheap wine. And the seltzers by, were not cheap, like they, it's not like you had like a, a gold standard for seltzers where you felt better or more refined than a cheapo brand. Like all the seltzers were basically the same. We just uh, decided we want the lowest carbs, lowest sugar, because I think the sugar and these things can dictate whether you feel good or bad the next day, depending on how much you drink. Uh, almost any alcohol, I don't care how great it is, you drink way too much of it without enough hydration, you're gonna feel like crap. So it doesn't matter if it's thousand dollar a bottle wine. So I started looking into like things like, like this pinnacle vodka and I, I started examining the vodka industry in general and the, I found something, I mean, since we weren't regular vodka drinkers, I found something quite interesting. The, the price disparity for the similarly, similarly packaged um, uh, products, 1.75 or 750 uh, milliliter, whatever it, it may be, um, was, was incredibly different. The low-end plastic bottles of the cheap hobo wine uh, vodka was, uh, I, don't know, I, I don't even know what it costs. I didn't even look, I think it's like 10 bucks uh, or less for a 1.75 of the El cheapest stuff ever. And I have bad memories of, of drinking those cheap vodkas from my early days when I was a teenager. Yeah, I drank before it was legal. Um, <laughs> what, is somebody gonna ban me because I'm 40, 30 years ago, whatever I drank, uh, I drank before I drank illegally, ooh, throw me in jail. Anyway, the whole point is that that there's there's so much BS in the, in the in this vodka and spirit. The whole alcohol industry is is BS in my opinion. Most of it is marketing. Most of it is fake uh, 
uh, beliefs that you think you know what you're talking about, but you never really step back and like almost have an out of body experience where you say, you know, really, does it really make a difference? So the, the price difference between the, let's say the 1.75 liter bottles of vodka is, is incredible. It's, it goes from like the $10 range all the way up to almost 60 or $70 a bottle. I think for the premium great goose and it, I don't think it makes a difference, especially if you if you keep your drinking down. So here's what we did. First of all, I did the math, and even a $30 bottle of 1.75 bottle of, of vodka, this wasn't $30, but like I was looking at Tito's, which is very, we've had that before, and it, yeah, it's okay. We didn't like the taste too much. A $30 bottle of a 1.75 bottle of vodka is cheaper per night if you drink the same amount of alcohol than drinking the seltzers by about, I don't know, I think 30 or 40 percent cheaper. Uh, I have another video coming up uh, next week about being a math nerd and, and really truly having a controlled experiment because uh, one of the things, the bad things, the negative things I can think of with drinking spirits or vodka in general are that it's extremely easy to over consume. Um, whereas a beer, you can't really, beer or, or even wine for that matter, you're limited by your uh, rate of consumption. Each, each glass or can or bottle of beer is the same size and you just have to chug faster when it comes to drinking a beer or a glass of wine. Um, that's why I throttle, I throttle by diluting. And it, it's, it, I enjoy drinking. I can't drink small, you know those little highball glasses they have where people put whiskey on the rocks and they sip it? That's, I'm not a sipper. I, some people may be able to sip. I cannot sip. I love drinking fast. Everything I drink fast. Coffee, water, this uh, drink I'm drinking, which is seltzer um, and like, a little bit of vodka, just to make it, it's about a, the same amount of alcohol as my seltzer drinks. I, that's, I had to do that. But the thing with spirits and mixed drinks is that it's extremely easy to make your drink extremely potent. And no two drinks are the same, unless you use a scale like we're going to show you next week. Or, you know, a measuring cup. It's so easy to, you, you can, let's say you're having a good time and all of a sudden you start making your drink stronger towards the end of the night. It, it's, it's, it happens to most people. It's very easy to fall into that trap of having this massive um, 50 something ounce bottle of, of 80 proof booze and then drinking too much. It, it's a really, really slippery slope to be on. So. You really have to control how fast you drink it and that takes discipline and of course discipline is not necessarily conducive to the more drinks you have because once you're on drink four or five your discipline goes down and you may you, you, it's a slippery slope so anyway just real quick this is supposed to be like a quick review about pinnacle vodka i mean i talked about it last week how it's it's a really good deal right now because they have a seven dollar rebate i know we're splitting hairs and pinching pennies here but it's a really good deal right now because uh, 17.99 at most uh, liquor stores with a seven dollar rebate you can't beat it, it it's it's a, it's a good i think it's a fantastic so fantastic vodka so what i did was i bought these little airline bottles at uh at various uh, liquor stores and I'm like I, I want to try various brands out just to see how I like the taste and it for a buck for a 50 milliliter bottle it's it's an easy experiment it's affordable you don't have to invest in a $50 bottle of, of vodka just and to be disappointed and have to suffer th through it or donate it to somebody so I, I bought a couple of these things I bought you know this El Cheapo, this is Platinum 7X. I have no idea who makes that. There's the uh, Pinnacle. There was this Seagram's Extra Smooth. And there was this uh, Western Sun Texas Vodka. This is 10 times distilled. They all have their little marketing shticks. Whereas cars, you know, you get miles per gallon and cubic feet of trunk space. They all have features now. It's like, I talk to a lot of people at various uh, 
liquor stores to get their true opinion. I spoke to them off the record and, and it, it became clear to me after a few weeks that the vodka industry is bullshit, okay? It's complete and utter BS. Um, it's personal personal choice. There's nothing magical in, in a bottle of vodka that's gonna make you, and there's some even that say you won't get a hangover. Um, I think we tried one of those. It, it didn't, It. I don't think it really worked. I think it was psychosomatic, the whole reaction. You drink too much, you're gonna feel like shit no matter what it is. So, like now the 10X distilled, 7X distilled and smooth. You know what, I tasted these without even really looking at the labels. Um, just to give you a quick five second review of each one. The Western Sun was smooth. It was good, I didn't mind it. New Amsterdam, which is I guess being touted by a lot of people. I tried it, I didn't like it. It tasted like um, like bad that bad vodka I had when I was a teenager. This uh, Seagram's Extra Smooth, that passed the test. I'll try it um, if it's cheap. The Platinum 7X, that was just fine. I didn't, I didn't even notice it in my, in my drink. And the Pinnacle, um, we chose the Pinnacle because it was equally as smooth as the other ones that we liked. But we had the rebate, so we, this became the cheapest for, for you know, for, let's say with tax, $12 for about, I think, God, I forget what the math was. It was like 40 or 40 or so um, drinks, or, I mean, 30, 38 drinks out of one 1.7 1 uh, bottle. That, that's cheaper than, than any other uh, form of alcohol that we can consume. So that's it. I mean, I, I, I think we like it because it's smooth. And if you can control how much you drink in a given night and, and maintain your pri uh, hydration, I think vodka is really not a, not a bad choice for, for alcohol consumption. Obviously it's missing the, the, uh, the aura of, or whatever you would call it, the mystery of, of talking about wine and finishes and, and all this other stuff and hints and aromas. Um, your vodka, like if you get a good vodka that, that's not too harsh and it's smooth, you, you almost don't taste it. So your vodka drinking um, experience is dependent upon whether you mix it with something. Some people like to do it half and half cranberry. I mean, you, that's terrible. I hate it. Cranberry juice filled with sugar. Like I said, I mix it with like non-calorie uh, flavored seltzer. No artificial uh, sweeteners either. And I put a splash of lemon and a ginger capsule in all my, my drinks these days. And it just it's just fantastic. You really ought to try it. Um, so it, it all depends on your drinking style. I guess I kind of lost my point here, but I think vodka is, uh, is completely different. It doesn't have, like I said, the same kind of mystery and all this other BS. It's just a way of catching a little buzz uh, without feeling like utter crap the next day. And I think it's the most affordable way. And if you find a good enough vodka with a good enough rebate, it's, it's not low class either. Even though this is a plastic bottle, big deal. It's, a, it's it less uh, heavy recycling. So that's it. I rambled on here, but I think uh, vodka, we're, we're definitely going to keep it in the rotation. I still enjoy the flavors of the spiked seltzers a lot, especially the Smirnoff ones are still by, by far the best of the bunch. But uh, vodka for, for economic reasons is, is not a bad idea either. And quick little note here, if you ever like just want to have a couple drinks before bed, but you don't want to go through the the, uh, the the pain of drinking six or seven drinks. If you need to, and you can pull out your little like uh, emergency uh, weapon. If you ever want to just have three drinks before bed, you can always spike your spiked seltzer with a splash of um, vodka as well, just to make them a little stronger. If you need to, that's the good thing about having vodka on hand is that you, if you need to turbocharge something, say you just, you're, you're running late and you just have want one drink before bed and you want to give yourself a little sedative to fall asleep, 
You can do that in short order by just spiking your drink. But again, that becomes problematic because you might overdo it and have another and another and another and all of a sudden you're hung over the next day. So self-control and throttling and, and being aware of how much you drink is, is always important. But then again, how, how often do we act rationally and, and, and intelligently? It's not, it's not too often, but that's it. Next week, it's drinking for math nerds. And we're, I'll show you exactly how you can, you can perform self experiments, which are a lot of fun. You learn a lot about yourself and, and you're able to, to find your faults and, and improve your daily life with, by using metrics and, and real world comparisons and, and, uh, and so on. I'm rambling, I'm done. See you guys next week on the booze uh, chat here on uh, njroot22.com. Please visit the site, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, all that other crap. If you listen for 20 minutes, I think, I don't know how long I talked here, but that's it. Take care.